Well, praise the Most High today, family. We say praise the Most High today. It is a gorgeous day here in the Carolinas, and we're so glad to see it, family. I do hope everyone is well and that you're able, like myself, to get out and enjoy this day. It has been a few days of storms here in the Carolinas, in my neck of the woods anyway. And yesterday we held off on doing a recording because of, and also we went out, my pop and my uncle, we went out to um, their doctor's appointments. Both of them had doctor's appointments on the same day, so it took most of the day. But we say praise the Most High that gave us time to digest what the Most High was telling us. I hope I said I hope everyone is well and that you're able to get out and enjoy your day if you have sunshine, fresh air, and um, able to get in some steps, some, some type of exercise today. Like I did yesterday, we was walking through the VA all day, most seemed like. But it was a great day spending with my pop and my uncle. Catching up, family. Catching up times that we um, missed out on from the time I was a chap. Because when you saw them, you saw me right in the middle. <laughs> or if you saw me, you saw one or the other. Because I stayed with them, I stuck with them. And it's so amazing how much you learn from people and, and look back and say, dog. I didn't know this is um, where I picked that up from. But um, we say praise the most high for this day and this idea. And it's called Pit Stop or Pit Stop. Pit Stop or Pit Stop. And this idea was um, put on my heart about a week or so ago. I may have mentioned it in one of the recordings that we've done since I heard this. And it was a young lady saying that, um, I can't think of who it was now. If I did, I, I would definitely give them a shout out because this idea is exactly where I'm at and it's really helping me a whole lot. But she gave the idea of pit stop, like in, in a race where you stop and recharge, refuel, retool. And I think I have mentioned it. And that was the first part of um, what I need to hear. But then um, two nights ago, the night before last, the most I said, you're in a, you're at a pit stop. Just like with Joseph and his brothers. How instead of um, one of them saving him out of the pit that they had threw him in, which one of them did, and I think it was, um, which brother was that? One of the older brothers, if not the oldest brother. He said, let's not kill him, let's sell him. I think that was Judah that said, let's sell him, but the older brother said, we, we can't kill him. Let's think of another way. But either way, one of them came to his rescue and pulled them up out of the pit and they went on and sold them to the um, to the people that took them to Egypt. And the most I was impressing on me, he was saying, instead of looking at where you're at, it's just a pit stop to where you're recharging and retooling and um, relearning who you were, grounding yourself how about doing the same for the other people around you that are here and in, in where you're at now? And to them, it's a pit. Uh-uh. Uh-oh. To them, they need some of what you got that got you out of the pit you was in. Uh-uh-uh. And for you to help them heal while you're healing from, from where you're coming from. I say, yes, sir, I will. That was so powerful. And what he led me to, family, and he gave me this Nehemiah Heard 
he wept and he prayed. So we need to hear, weep, slash repent, and pray. And the script of the day is Philippians 2, 3 through 4. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Oh boy. And this script really brought it all together, family. But let's continue with Psalms 119 and 28. And it says, My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. And see, family, how many of us know that we need to be strengthened before we try to strengthen and help anybody else? And let's go on and look at Nehemiah. Nehemiah 1, 5 through 11. It says, And I said, I pray, O Most High Elohim of heaven, O great and awesome Elohim, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love and observe your commandments. Uh oh. That thing said, You who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children children of Yasharal, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Yasharal, which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinance which you have commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray the word that you command your servant Moshe, saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the farthest parts of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the to the place which I have chosen as my dwelling for my name. Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O Most High, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your, fear your name and let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant him mercy in the sight of, of this man. For I was the king's cupbearer. And family, we, we most most of us all know the story. We're going to stop there. And Nehemiah goes on and he's he's the cupbearer for the king. And the king asks him, he, he's like, what's wrong? Your countenance is down. For all this time you have been a cupbearer for me, your countenance has never been low like this. And family, it's, it's a, it, it was against the law back then for him to come in sad looking. <coughs> he was supposed to have a a, a good um, <laughs> a good Negro spiritual the same for him. And I'm kidding, but he was supposed to be happy all the time or joyful because he had that high position in the king's um court. But Nehemiah had just heard and this was his prayer. He had just heard that Jer Jerusalem, his hometown, was being sacked and set on fire. And the people that was there was in trouble. The walls were tore down. So the people had no protection. <clears throat> let me read these notes. <clears throat> Pardon me, family. And I'm speaking the notes, but let me read them. When Nehemiah heard that the walls of Jerusalem, his hometown, had been torn down and burned, and that the people who survived were in great danger, he wept. He was heartbroken. For days he mourned. He asked the Most High to do something. Even though he was a thousand miles away from Jerusalem and had no means to do anything himself, the Most High put a dream in his heart to go back home and rebuild those walls. And amazingly, he did. It's 